Okay, I'd like to call to order the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting of Tuesday, September 17th. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 13th of September at 3.30 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Roll call. There are 23 supervisors present. We're gonna, can you hold it off a minute? Cheryl, Ed is walking in. As he walks up, he can push sure. his button. That's okay. <laughs> that, I hate the rule you ought to order, Supervisor Baumgart, because that was so funny. That was unbelievable. <laughs> that was good. That was good. 24 supervisors now present. Thank you. Approval of the August 20th, 2019 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Otten. I'll second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Otten. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Motions approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointment by chairperson. To your county board, Jacqueline Veldman of Cascade. Yeah, I think you received the information on this. I'm just going to briefly say um, she's the town chairperson out in the town of Mitchell. She did happen to be the only applicant. Um, but as I said to people, you only need one really good applicant. I think she's an excellent candidate. I'll be perfectly honest. I um, think I speak for Vern when I say she, we both interviewed her. She impressed both of us with her knowledge and background, and I think she's committed to the county board. So I'm very pleased to submit this for your approval, hopefully. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with the appointment of the chair. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Adler. I support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Adler. Are there any questions or discussion? Seeing no lights. Please push your I or nay button. Okay. <coughs> that appointments approve unanimously. Thank you very much for that. Uh, consideration of appointments by executive committee. To Transportation Committee, Jacqueline Veldman, and to Health Care Center Committee, Jacqueline Veldman. Just real briefly, um, I just wanted to point out the Executive Committee supported me in this, and I was, with six months ago, frankly, I didn't want to play musical chairs and move a bunch of people around. I also happen to think Jackie's very qualified, not that there wouldn't be other people who are qualified. She's particularly qualified relative to transportation. She's done a whole, whole lot of things out there, so I just thought... Um, to move her into Dick's two positions uh, for the last six months would be better than doing a bunch of musical chairs. So that was my decision making, if you want to know. I, I always like to share that with you. So, Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with the appointment of the chair. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button.
those appointments are approved 23 ayes one nay thank you very much uh, i did want to point out that jackie is not here tonight she had a previous um, i think it was some sort of banquet that she's involved in running in that and this came up obviously fairly quickly so she's not here she'll be sworn in tomorrow and we'll assume her position beginning tomorrow but i wanted to let you know otherwise you'd be able to meet her but uh, because of that and i fully understood that it happens within a month and people have plans sometimes so she felt bad about it but those things do happen so thank you consideration of appointment by county administrator to aging and disability advisory committee reappointments joanne van horn whelan jim gilligan david williams derek mensch mary nowecki and Teresa gessler okay if people are comfortable we can take them all at once supervisor Abler. I'd move to approve the county administrator's appointments, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Abler. Supervisor Procheck. I will support that recommendation. Thank you, Supervisor Procheck. Any questions or comments? If not, please push your I or nay button. Those appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by the county administrator, um, airport advisory committee. Appointments Greg Schnell, Deidre Martinez, Glenn Valenstein, and reappointments Mindy Smith, David Hilpertschauser, Lee Quincy, and Brandon Molina. Okay, once again, we'll take these all at once unless there's objection. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I think we're moving too fast here, so we're going to give Cheryl a minute. To... Do, do, do. No, never mind. made the motion again. Do you have it, Cheryl? Yeah. Okay, now we may vote. This appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, presentation. Uh, Matt Stripmotter from Health and Human Services Director and Diane Liebenthal, Health and Human Service Division Manager, Public Health Importance and Immunizations. That's all right. Welcome, Matt and Diane. So good evening. My name is Matt Stripmotter. I'm the Health and Human Services Director. And on behalf of Diane and myself, it's our pleasure to be here tonight to talk briefly um, about the role and importance of immunizations. This is something that I'm sure you've been thinking about. I'm also pretty sure that nationally or uh, in the state media, there is things that you've seen in the last weeks or months. Um, this is something that's in the forefront. There is a, for example, a measles outbreak <clears throat> that has now reached 31 states in the country. And immunization is the primary mechanism for protection of the public. Um, Wisconsin has legislation that's being contemplated related to personal convictions because personal convictions of choosing to not be vaccinated for a personal reason um, does seem to be affecting the overall protection of the public through vaccinations. And with that, I will turn it over to Diane Liebenthal to give you additional information related to the topic. Okay. 
So the goal of vaccination, as Matt stated, is really to protect everybody against vaccination, preventable diseases, and everyone in our community can be impacted. As you can see on this slide, every age group needs certain vaccinations. Um, as Matt mentioned, the measles outbreak is definitely something that brings us all to mind. And without a needed level of immunization in our community, there will be disease that will present. Currently, as Matt stated, 31 states and over 1,200 people have been impacted by the measles outbreak within the United States. In addition, there are costs associated with that outbreak and that includes tracing all the contacts and administering vaccines, and that is costly. In Colorado, two um, cases of measles cost $68,192, and 283 people were impacted by that. The next concept we kind of like to go over is about herd or community immunity, and this is a really important concept. So um, what this means is that the more people that are vaccinated, the more protection we have. There are always people that cannot be vaccinated. Um, babies before a certain age, for example, people with diseases and other things like that, um, such as cancer or HIV. Um, an example of the amount of people who would need to be vaccinated in order to protect the community is found again in measles. So it's um, 93 to 95% of the community would need to be vaccinated to allow protection to most of the population. An example in Sheboygan County is that children by age two in Sheboygan County, only 83% of those children are vaccinated against measles. So going over this graph, in the first third of the graph, um, the people in blue are not vaccinated, and when a disease strikes their community, you can see on the right-hand side that almost everyone is impacted by the disease. In the second or the center column, there are some people in yellow that are vaccinated. And so when disease hits their community, there are less people that are impacted, but still pretty high. And then the third example is when a lot of people, or like we're talking about with measles, 95% um, are vaccinated, then most of the community is protected. This is a chart that demonstrates um, one of the things that we monitor in public health is the vaccination rates of children in schools. And this data is from 2018 to 2019. And as you can see, Sheboygan County is doing better than the state of Wisconsin, but there is room for improvement. Uh, and again, going back to measles, we would need to be at 95% to protect the community. This is an example of the waivers that we do now have available. And there's three types. In July of 1975, waivers were put into place for medical and religious waivers. And then in May of 1980, personal conviction waivers became available to, per, to parents to use if they did not approve of vaccinations for their children. So this chart really looks at that data and you can see that health and religious waivers have remained fairly stable. However, the personal conviction waivers have continued to increase every year. So that's just a brief update on vaccinations, and thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Tom Kemp. I'm with the Kettle Trails Group, uh, working on the ATV routes in the area. Um, I want to talk a little bit tonight about keeping it simple. Um, 
we run into as we go through our process different counties and different concepts on how to do things and what we run into is in some townships and counties where they've had trouble with clubs doing their own thing they put very restrictive rules uh, for example in Fond du Lac County by putting such restrictive rules on ATVs and making everyone go through a lot of committees they've caused a whole bunch of problems for themselves the highway committee is overwhelmed with requests where it actually consumes their meetings every month. And then more clubs are getting into it and more people are doing it. It's to the point now where Fond du Lac County has actually stopped taking requests for roads, taking requests for signs because they made it very cumbersome. Um, so I guess I'm here to ask that when considering the ATV uh, proposition that you just keep it simple. We want to do it easy. We want to work with everybody. We want to do it right. But we don't want to create you guys a lot of work, cost you a lot of money, or cost the highway department a headache. We would like it to be easy. We're willing to work with everybody and do anything we can to make it as simple as possible. Um, if we keep it easy, it's very simple to take a, a sign that we use now on the ends of towns, which says all town roads in the town of Scott are open to ATVs. And if, the, if it's a simple process here in the county, all I gotta do is change that sign to town and county roads in the town of Scott are open. It's a simple change of a sign and it's all done. If it's very uh, cumbersome, I have to mark every single road that's open or closed, beginning and end, and it becomes a trouble. And then I have to get road permits and stuff and bother Mr. Schnell over there too much. And so I just ask that you keep it simple. Thank you. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> then Timothy Rohr, 6415 Glen Court of West Bend. Good evening. I am also a representative of the Kettle Trails, but I'm also the president of the Kettle Marine ATV Association. And we do a lot of uh, interacting with Sheboygan County, actually, uh, over the last couple of years. We have several members, many members, um, that belong to our club that live in Sheboygan County. Um, as my address shows, I'm not a county resident. Um, but as a representative of the club, uh, I just want to pass along uh, from the club and the, obviously the members that live in Sheboygan County that we would like to see an ordinance passed uh, to, to move this, this along. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about really quick was um, the economic development here in Sheboygan County has been a great asset to, to us. Um, they have put out press releases. Uh, they sent a letter uh, endorsing the ATV trails and routes in Sheboygan County as a positive for Sheboygan County. So um, I would like to just thank them for all their support also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is all we have. Thank you, John. Letters, communications, and announcements. Uh, there are two items. The first is a letter from Roy Sellers of Sheboygan regarding traffic on the intersection of O and Y. That'll be referred to the Transportation Committee. And the last item is the resignation letter from Supervisor Bemis. And I've had numerous conversations I just wanted to add with uh, Dick and I mean he was here close to or right at 40 years and uh, Dick is not a big fan of recognition as you probably know um, and tried at least three or four times to get him to come here <laughs> and uh, we had very nice conversations he's very grateful for what we've done, done for him and comments in the paper but he uh, does not want to have recognition but we're working on something a little more private for him just so you know and we'll let you know when when that takes place but he just uh, 40 years it should be recognized it's unbelievable in my opinion uh, to be that length of time on a county board and I can't let that go without mentioning something because that would be just I think heresy and just so you know and Dick thought this was a, a kind of a neat idea I asked Supervisor Testruti as the senior member now of the county board 
to make the motion to adjourn. I said, Dick, otherwise we're never going to adjourn. We're going to be here all the time if you're not here. So, so Supervisor Trudy, as a senior member, will now make that motion. So thank you. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Supervisor Beam has called me this afternoon and he already sounded relaxed. <laughs> Uh, he continues to serve on the Rocky Knoll Foundation, and Kayla and I spoke just prior to that, and Kayla said, you know, I saw Supervisor Bemis at the foundation, and she, he just seemed so much more relaxed, and, and when Dick called me this afternoon just to check in, not only was he complimentary of the county board chairman's appointment to fill his seat, I think he's feeling good about that, but uh, he just, he's in a good place. He says he's doing well, he's feeling good, his wife is home, and uh, doing better, so I wanted to share that, but he definitely uh, was feeling good, so we're gonna miss him, I know, but I'm glad that he's in good spirits. I'm gonna briefly talk about the five-year capital plan. I, I think that's probably one of the key decision items you have on the county board agenda this evening. As you know, we have a very extensive and successful five-year capital planning process. The county board, the county as an organization, has had it in play for a long time. It's a collaborative approach where department heads work with their respective liaison committees, myself, the finance director, and ultimately get approval from the finance committee and the executive committee to come forward with a revised plan. And on your desks last month, and you certainly had it as part of your mail out, your packet Friday, I want to thank Cheryl for also sending out not only the high-end summary, but you had the whole report in there as well that the Finance Committee had the benefit of going through that detail. So I hope you had a chance to do that. I'm just going to very briefly touch on some of the highlights of the plan in case you didn't get a chance to do that or you haven't looked at it. In, in the last few days or weeks. Uh, the five-year capital plan, the beauty of it is we often put things out two, three, four, five years out. We have more time to review that project and then ultimately it comes to the point where we need to either bond dollars or leverage dollars or generally a combination of both. Uh, as you know, planning and conservation has a number of good projects in play. One is continues to be Amsterdam Dunes and creating a wetland mitigation bank uh, why? So we can enhance economic development as well as have less taxpayer expense if we're extending a, a road, widening a road, working on an airport runway, or a company like Sargento wants to extend its headquarters and impact wetland. We now have a wetland mitigation bank in play that we can utilize here rather than buy expensive credits in Ashland County or some other area. Aaron continues to work with the Department of Natural Resources on getting that wetland mitigation bank up and running. We're hoping to see most of the work that needs to now get done to finalize that happening this fall and winter. And by next year, we want to have our credits available. And of course, the county board will ultimately determine what are we going to sell those credits for, how much. So it's a win-win it's a for the business community and local units of government. Uh, Greenbush. Old Plank Road Trail, the new construction from Greenbush to the Fond du Lac County line. No doubt all of you are watching the Highway 23 expansion work go. My dad was just in town the other day and he's like, what is going on with Highway 23? Well, if you're here every day, you certainly know. And uh, they're making good progress. As part of that project, they're going to be putting in the um, foundation uh, the base work for that trail. We'll have to then come in with the pavement to maintain that, but they're getting that site all ready for that. And so that's going to be a wonderful amenity that will continue on the Fond du Lac. So that's in play. Uh, courthouse boiler replacements. Uh, not a real fascinating topic perhaps for most of you, but they haven't been replaced since 1968. There's asbestos in the ceilings, and thank goodness we, we have folks like Jim Tabeast who plans accordingly for that and make sure, make sure that we're replacing them as needed. That goes for the roof replacement too. A number of years ago, Jim with the, worked with the property committee to put a roof replacement plan together. So rather than us knee-jerk reaction to a leak or a severe situation, he's thoughtfully prudently going through the roofs as needed. So that's part of the plan as well. Rocky Knoll will have some work done. The courthouse second floor ledge will have some work done. And the Aging and Disability Resource Center garage will have some work done. And that's just in 2020. Obviously, there's work after that as well. 
Health and Human Services. If you've parked there recently, you know doggone well that that parking lot is in sorry need of enhancements. In fact, we purchased that building in 1987 and the parking lot has not been upgraded. In fact, when we reach out to vendors now to do a seal coat, they won't do it anymore. And the reason they won't do it anymore is because there's sinkholes, there's ponding, obviously there's icing uh, situations in the winter. They, they don't want to touch it. And so again, thanks to Jim Tobese and his crew, we're going to line up the work to get that upgraded. And it's been since 1987, just so you know. So it's time. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is going to finally see a shooting range that actually has some up-to-date technology with scenarios. And as you can imagine, we want our law enforcement to have the tools they need to do the difficult work that they do. The target system has not been functioning for the last few years and in fact has not been replaced since the law enforcement center was built in 1981. So it's time. And then um, a couple others. On-site child care at Rocky Knoll. Certainly the Health Care Centers Committee has been following that. As I said, the Finance Committee and the Executive Committee have reviewed and, are, and approved or is recommending approval for all of these. But why would we add child care at Rocky Knoll? One of the reasons is we're paying more in overtime than we care to. And that's because we have over 20 CNA positions filled. We're struggling to find nurses and LPNs. And you think about the people that work there. There's a lot of young people with young families. And if we could have child care on site, we really think that could help us with recruiting and retaining employees. We also have the transportation complex just down the road. And that presents an opportunity as well to provide a benefit for our employees and also open it up to the public as capacity provides. So we have a space identified. We have uh, plans in play, and of course, we'd have to contract with someone to operate it. It's not our plans to operate the facility, just to provide the space for it. And speaking of that, I'll end with the customs facility. As you know, we've had discussions about the customs facility for a number of years. Uh, we've had in the five-year capital plan, the board's voted on it a, a number of times. The cost has actually come down, and that's a credit to everyone involved. But uh, what I'm pleased to report tonight is we now have a signed operational agreement with the Kohler company uh, that did test uh, folks' patients involved, but it is a wonderful example of collaboration uh, between the largest employer in the county. Kohler Company, as you recall, asked us to establish the U.S. Customs Facility. They want to have a staff person there, obviously, and they have agreed for the next three years to fully fund it. After that, we would implement user fees, and depending on the user fees, that might offset some of their costs associated with it. So if Bemis or Johnsonville or other companies start utilizing that as well, or as we get people flying into Sheboygan County to golf some of the nicest golf courses in the country, uh, that will present some revenue as well. So it is not the county's plan to get involved with the operational cost. That's going to be covered by the Kohler Company or user fees going forward. But we are pleased that this facility is proceeding. A lot of work's been going on behind the scenes by Greg Schnell and our team to uh, get this designed. We're hoping to break ground in November, and it's our expectation that it will be built and operational in August of 2020 because the Ryder Cup, as you know, is in September of 2020. So that's a little snapshot of the five-year capital plan and many of the good projects that are in play. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Consideration of committee reports, executive committee resolution number eight. Regarding the 2020 five-year capital plan recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number eight. Thank you, Supervisor Gearing. <coughs> Supervisor Obler. Support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Prove unanimously. Thank you. Committee reports, executive committee, resolution number nine. 
regarding requesting the Wisconsin Legislature to end use of personal conviction waivers for school and daycare center immunizations, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor. Supervisor Hoffman. I move we approve. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you. Sorry, I hit your light twice. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Okay, any questions or comments? Uh, Supervisor Otten? Yeah, I want everybody to realize. Uh, Roger, use your mic. That's okay. I want everybody to realize that this is a very important request because what's happening is many parents are coming when school starts and they say, I didn't have my kids uh, vaccinated, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, ask for a abstaining from doing that and and uh, for personal reasons. And and many times it's just neglect of not having it done. So I think this is very important because it puts everybody else at risk. So we should be concerned about passing this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Otten. Supervisor Brula. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As elected officials, it is our duty to take action on items that are in the best interest of our community as a whole. With this in mind, I understand the basis of supporting this resolution. However, I do not support this resolution for the following reasons. First, the following First, by removing the personal conviction waiver option, a loophole still exists. That would be the religious conviction waiver. So that a parent, legal guardian, etc., who does not want their child vaccinated may still be able to refuse the vaccinations while the child continues to attend school, therefore negating the removal of the personal conviction waiver. Second, by allowing the religious conviction waiver to remain, we are, in my opinion, showing preferential treatment to one group of citizens over another. Therefore, if we support removing the personal conviction waiver, should we not also support removing the religious conviction waiver? thereby removing any chance of parents, legal guardians, etc., to use a loophole and, and the possibility of preferential treatment. As removal of these waivers would greatly lessen the ability of children to get communicable, the communicable disease, diseases for which they would be vaccinated against, I believe that doing so would be removing a parent's right to decide what is best for his or her child. Instead, I believe we should educate the parents on the benefits of vaccination and the consequences of not vaccinating via a series of required classes of verifiable data by knowledgeable, knowledgeable professionals, for example, before a parent, legal guardian, et cetera, would be able to sign a waiver of any kind. I have faith in parents as a whole and think that given accurate information, they then have the ability to make an informed decision. I believe this issue requires closer scrutiny before we, as a board, put our support behind this particular resolution. Therefore, I, for one, will be voting against showing our support for this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Brula. Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. Um, I can't very much uh, top uh, Supervisor Brula's uh, a description on some of my um, attitudes about this. I also feel that uh, if there is, is something that tells me that they got to have the uh, vaccinations, what happens if they still refu refu refuse? To, are there any, any uh, consequences for that? And I don't see that built into the situation right now. Plus, it's a personal choice, so I will be joining Supervisor Brule in voting against this. And in addition to that, this is just a, a request to the Wisconsin legislature to end this. So it's not necessarily, as I see it, a, a, a law that we're putting into place. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Uh, Supervisor OJ. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with all due respect to my fellow supervisors, um, it's if you to get vaccinated and someone else's one and a half year old child gets measles. 
because they weren't old enough to get vaccinated yet. And the, the argument that you should do nothing rather than going half away with what's being proposed to me is nonsensical. We have an opportunity to do something that doesn't involve religious freedoms, which would be the big hold up with trying to do away with the, the religious refusal. To me, it's a start because the, the people who are, who are most at risk are the ones who probably aren't able to get vaccinated. So to say it's a victimless crime and it's personal choice, it's not. Um, the, I, I guess I just don't follow that line of reasoning and I'm, I'm sorry that I don't, but that's, I, I will be voting for this because I believe that you need to protect the people who are unable to get vaccinated from the people who choose not to get vaccinated. Thank you, Supervisor OJ. Supervisor Hoffman, do you want to speak? I got a feeling you're trying to push your button. Um, we discussed this thoroughly in the Board of Health, and, and uh, I, I agree there's, there's probably some reason on both sides, but I'm going to err on the side of safety. Also, um, I think we should have a personal exemption to the income tax. I don't like paying that. So let's get rid of that, and those that want to pay it can pay it, and those that don't, don't. What do you think of that idea? Well, this is much the same thing, I think. I mean, you're always going to have people that say, well, I don't want to. And I don't think personal exemption is a strong enough reason to say, I don't want to. So I'm going to be voting for this, uh, and as much protection as we can get for the rest of the public, we have to be considerate of each other. And I, that's why I'm going to vote for this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Motions approved, 22 ayes and two nays. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, transportation committee, ordinance number four. Regarding designating all-terrain vehicle routes and regulating the operation of all-terrain vehicles, committee recommendation amend per the committee report and an act as amended. Supervisor Testrudy. I move to enact resolution uh, ordinance number four. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudy. Supervisor Glavin. Second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any questions or comments? Supervisor OJ. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a question. Who approves the um, right-of-way permit application? Is that a committee function or is that a transportation director function? Right. Uh, I'll, I'll turn that over to Greg Schnell, our commissioner. The director does? You do. Okay, um, then I, I have a second question. Uh, we're charging these guys a fee so that they can take and put up the signage, do all the footwork to get the route so that I as a citizen can ride on it. Um, I hope this is a really small fee because they're doing an awful lot of work for people other than themselves. I understand. I don't know if there's a answer. Greg? It's a $50 fee for the Anything else? Um, yeah, I, I would move to, I not probably won't get support, but I would move to eliminate the application fee. Okay. There's an amendment then to eliminate the fee. Is there a second to that amendment? I need to clear the board, otherwise I can't see who's seconding it. Can I get that one, please? Okay, is there a second to Supervisor OJ's motion to eliminate the fee? Is there a second to eliminate the fee? Is there a second to eliminate the fee? Supervisor Epping, did you push your button? I saw your hand. Pardon? Yeah, I got you. So are you seconding it? Uh, I will make a second to that one. Okay, there's a second then. 
Uh, is that uh, debatable or do we just vote, I believe? An amend no, amendment? The amendment is debatable. It is debatable. Okay. Okay, Supervisor OJ, would you give uh, Cheryl the language? Um, no, I've got to find it. I would just, in line 66 and 67, eliminate and the associated fee. Yeah, it was just striking out and the associated fee. <laughs> no, this is just the fee for the right of way application to the county. <laughs> Everything for the town. It doesn't affect the signage or anything else. It's just them not having to pay money for me to use their trail. Yep, 66 and 67. Yeah, not fees, it's just fee. Because <laughs> it's only one fee. I don't want to confuse you into thinking I want to make this so that they're not paying the township, they're not paying for signage. I just don't feel they should have to pay a fee for them to get a trail approved for everyone else to use. You got it, Cheryl? Is that it? Yeah. Supervisor OJ, you see it up on the top? Yes. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on an amendment, and it's right at the top. Is there any discussion on the uh, amendment? You don't think that's it? If I may, Mr. Chair. Sure, go ahead. You said to strike on line 66 and the associated fee, correct? Correct. That's what you said, strike. That says up there to eliminate any associated fee. Yeah, that, that would be incorrect. Yeah, I just wanted so that the people, they would not have to pay a fee to the county for the right of way application. So they would still have to do the application, they just wouldn't be paying a fee for it. We got gotcha. you. Okay. Striking line And it's A and D. But she's saying strike the whole line. Strike 67. No, that's not what Supervisor would you say. In line 66, G. In line, on line 66 under G, it says a right of way permit application. Then you strike the words and the associated fee. Just strike those four words. Oh, and the associated fee. A and D. Correct, Supervisor OG? Correct. And the associated fee. A and D. There you go. Got her? Yes. It's really just line 66. Okay, I think we have it. All right, there's an amendment on the floor. Any discussion on that amendment? Hearing none, let's vote on the amendment as written at the top.
That motion does not approve. Six ayes, 18 nays. Okay, thank you. Now we go back to the original ordinance, which is on the floor. Is there any other discussion on the original ordinance? Supervisor Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of the speakers that was up here just a little bit ago said, keep it simple. Uh, doing all roads open is not a good idea. Some roads should not be open. So you, you, you can't really go ahead and say, keep it simple. Secondly, I'm going to vote against this whole thing because we are more or less an urban county, and uh, especially Town of Wilson. And uh, I think we're opening up a can of worms. And for safety reasons, I'm going to vote against this ordinance in its totality. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Supervisor Nelson. Uh, just one clarification, please. Um, sure. Uh, previous to the uh, uh, amendment that didn't pass, I, th I thought I heard the uh, uh, resolution was to, to approve it, not uh, the amended resolution. And I think it should be the amended resolution as a Yeah, and you're, you're right. Amended and, and the first time I said it, I think the second time I didn't. Perfect. Thank you. You're right. Anything else? Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. In, uh, uh, I went to the last transportation meeting where they discussed this issue. Um, I'm fully in favor of opening all county roads to ATV traffic. I feel ATV drivers are reasonable, sensible, and safe. We have opened county roads up for bicyclists, walkers, and who knows what else. And uh, we feel free to do that. And if, if there's anything more, more dangerous on the roads, and I encounter this all the time, people bicycling and walking on county roads with and against traffic, however it should be. Um, ATV traffic should be regulated to a certain extent, just like regular traffic, and I think that's part of the amendment. So I, uh, I'm, I'm fully prepared to support, support this motion or this uh, ordinance as a, as a way to allow ATV riders the ability to use county roads to get wherever they want to or even even uh, just use it at their pleasure. This would also in include um, workers on farms, and, and uh, this is a, like uh, Supervisor Hoffman said, this is a rural community, and ATVs working on farms in the rural area could be a, vi could be a needed necessity. But yet, I don't see why we should restrict ATVs when we don't restrict bicycles and pedestrians from being on the roads. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Bosman. Yes, I started out with uh, wanting to speak to Supervisor Huffman's comment that the first stage of this approval is that the ATV club comes to the township and gets the approval of the township. So that needs to happen before anything else occurs. So as a township, you may make a decision that you don't want to have ATV routes in your township. This ordinance simply allows the connection between two town roads by utilizing a county road. And there are maps that are drawn to designate which roads will then be the connector between the two town roads. And as I have gone through this and worked with this, this is my understanding of what's happening. So first of all, the township has to, has to approve of it, and then we make the connections on roads that are approved to connect those town roads. So no, we are not opening up every road in the county. We are simply providing in those situations where a township has already agreed with the ATV group 
to designate routes that we can then connect those town roads via a county road. Thank you, Supervisor Bob Bosman. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the point of uh, opening up all of the county roads, um, that may sound good, but there are several county roads that go right through cities, like uh, TA, the extension of Taylor Drive, and in Falls and Plymouth, they also have county roads. And uh, again, I don't think that would be wise to open all of the roads up. The, the idea is to have each municipality uh, approach the county if they do want some links, uh, linking some of the spots and some of the town roads so that there's a continuous trail. But to open them all up, uh, that, that would be very unsafe to, to say and open that point up. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any other comments or questions? Supervisor Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Al, I did understand that, and I, I've got this, and I, and I understand that it wouldn't be, you know, how it was going to be done, but I'm still against it. So, uh, and speaking to Mr. Epping, who I greatly regard and respect, uh, just because one thing is legal, that doesn't mean another thing should be legal. Yeah. So that's just, just an opinion uh, of mine. And Supervisor Hoffman, I just want to, you can answer the, I have no problem, but remember to direct your, All to, right. to the chair. That's All right, thank you, Mr. Procedure. Chair. I've said my piece, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, seeing no lights, we'll vote on ordinance number four, which is for the committee recommended as amended. That motion's approved, 20 ayes, four nays. Thank you. Uh, I will turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Resolutions introduced, resolution number 10 from the executive committee. Regarding affirming the right of all Wisconsin citizens to fair and equal representation and requesting the adoption of a nonpartisan process for the preparation of legislative and congressional redistricting plans. Pursuant to Rule 13, it is anticipated that a motion to withdraw this proposed resolution will be made. If by majority vote, the board votes to pull a resolution, it will be subject to immediate action. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I move to pull for immediate action. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Obler. I support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Okay. This issue is holding a re resolution is non debatable, so if you'd please vote. Motion to poll is approved twenty two to two. Thank you. With that, we will be voting on resolution number 10. We need a motion. Is there a motion, please? Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Super Supervisor Obler. Support. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Is there any discussion? Supervisor Palmgart. Uh, just a clarification. Um, which one are we on? I just lost track. Resolution number 10. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further discussion, please vote. That motion is approved. 24 ayes, 4 nays. Resolution number 11 from the Law Committee. <clears throat> Regarding authorizing application for fiscal year 2019 Justice Assistance Grant Program Award. Resolution number 11 will be referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number 12 from Planning, Resources, Agriculture, and Extension Committee. Regarding approving revisions to Farmland Preservation Plan. 
Resolution number 12 will be referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 13 from Planning Resources, Agriculture and Extension Committee. Regarding approving easement for a village of Kohler sewage interceptor at Erie Avenue, Old Plank Road Trail Trailhead. Resolution number 13 will be referred to the Executive Committee. And resolution number 14 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding authorizing county aid for bridge culvert construction in the towns of Herman, Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, Sherman, and Wilson. Resolution number 14 will be sent to the Finance Committee. And there were no ordinances introduced. So we're up for adjournment. Supervisor Testruti. I would like to move to adjourn, but uh, just for clarification, I may be the longest serving, but I don't think I'm the oldest one of the group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let the record show I stand corrected. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor. It happens at home a lot, so I'm used to it. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Testruti. Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Epping, did you second the motion? Did you second the motion to adjourn? Yes. Okay. No, but the time has yes. passed me. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Please all vote on adjournment. Somebody would run.